All right, what's up you guys? This is Devin from Central Effects Studios and we're back with another video. Today we're going to be talking about Raw versus JPEG, but today we're going to be talking about a debate on Raw versus JPEG and two videos that came out recently from two of the biggest photography stars on YouTube. We got Jared Paul on the right and we got Tony Northrup on the left. Now with that being said, Tony came out with a video saying this is why I shoot JPEGs more often. Frono's photo, Jared Paulin came out and says, hey, you know what, I shoot raw, that's my brand, and I'm gonna tell you why you probably shouldn't be saying some of the things you're saying in your videos because they're not making sense to me. And that's pretty much where the basis of my video comes from. With that being said, let me tell you some of my background. I've been shooting uh, uh, with Canon cameras for about 10 years. I love Tony Northup, I love Jared Paul and I get along with both photographers. Matter of fact, here's my SDP book. This is Tony Northup's award-winning book. One of the most award-winning books on all of Amazon right now. I advise you to pick up a copy. Also, you can support Jared Paulin by picking up some of his I Shoot Raw stuff. Like, support both photographers because they have taught and given us so many free videos and free content their work ethics are almost second to none. Like literally, these are some of the biggest cats on YouTube when it comes to photography. But I really wanna key in on this debate because a lot of people talk about this debate. Raw versus JPEG is one of the biggest debates in camera history, especially when it comes to the digital photography world. Like you have this ability to take an image and just like bring it back from nothing but raw. And JPEG, you have the ability to take a picture almost solely relying on the camera to add your sharpening and your saturation and all of this stuff. Now, this is one of the biggest debates, and I'm going to get into why I think Tony probably should have added more context and why I think Jared probably came off as a little, a teensy weensy bit biased. But like I said, I'm not here to bash any photographer. Here we go. Now, Tony starts off by saying how long it takes, you know, for his raw files to process, you know, but you have to think about it from Tony's eyes. Tony is a workhorse. He has a whole bunch of YouTube videos. He has a whole bunch of videos. Like, he processes the, he has the videos, he has the pictures. You know how much memory that takes? I saw this dude make, like, a his, it show us the internals of his computer and how he made it his uh, CPU and like literally you could see terabytes upon terabytes upon terabytes of just you know memory and you could you could just imagine how much he goes through it now I know Jared Paulin kind of bit at this statement and was like hey man that's a little bit dramatic you don't have to be like 24 hours for such and such amount of raw files he's like hey man all you have to do is not spray and pray but this this is a little bit, I think, controversial because when Jared Pollan says spray and pray, I think Jared kind of forgets Tony Northrup has a huge workflow. And if anybody was to come to me and say it took 24 hours to process 5DSR raw files, <laughs> I believe him, especially if you want to do that little, uh, was it smart preview for Lightroom to make everything go faster? And I think I remember reading something like that in his description of Tony, uh, Tony Northrup's video. Yeah, he was doing smart previews and all of this stuff. And Lightroom is pretty sluggish when it comes to those high megapixel raw files as opposed to, you know, Capture One or was it Photo Mechanic or any of those other tethering uh, programs that allows you to import raw files fast. Now, with all that being said, I think Jared pulls up a really big point of why would you advocate shooting more JPEGs when raw is the way to go because these pictures are like our babies. They're like jewels. They're like, you know, they're our work. They're like our everything. They're like our heart. When Jared Pollan said that, it really struck my soul because Jared put out this video about, it's like a documentary video when he was talking to some college students about photography or some students about photography. And he was talking about how he took pictures of, I believe, his mother or his grandmother on her final days. And it really brings that more sensitive side out of photography for him instead of that workforce side that, that comes more out of Tony. Because Jared Paulin is it, struck in his heart when he was taking the final pictures of his mother. And I'm pretty sure, I bet, I bet, if I had a million dollars, I would bet a million dollars that he shot those final pictures of his mother raw. 
so he could remaster them and see them the way he saw them through his camera lens the best way he knew how and it's just I, how can you disagree with that if you're if you love photography if this is what you love to do it's no way you can disagree with that um but uh tony did go further in his video by saying that um you know most of the people are shooting indoor sports with their you know children's games and stuff like that people are shooting their indoor sports with like t6 cameras with low dynamic range it well they're good cameras but they're not as good as what you might see a professional using and if you are taking a picture you might not want to be professional but you might want to have strong image quality so if you're shooting indoor sports you might want to be able to, you know, underexpose, maybe protect some of those highlights and stuff like that, and maybe keep some of that noise down a little bit without shooting high ISOs, and then maybe recover what you want without pulling out so much noise from those some from those raw files. Now JPEG will just give you a whole bunch of noise, and not really give you that much of a choice. But with that being said, I think that Tony Northwood was right. But I think Jared Paulin's a little bit right when he says a lot of people don't know what raw files are if they're beginners. They're beginners, they don't know, you know what raw is. And if they do know what raw is, most of them are scared. Why? Because raw comes with, with its own kind of workflow. Like if you have raw, you pretty much are gonna need a program that edits raw. Um, Windows 10 and most of the new operating systems are good at you know letting you be able to see and preview your raw files, but 5DS and 5DSR might challenge some of them, but most of the people who are new photographers don't have 5DS, 5DSRs. Usually, they don't expel that much money for a camera just off basis, even if they had that much money. But with all that being said, I think both of them are right to an extent, um, but you have to also look at it from their point of view, their eyes. Tony is a workhorse. Jared's a workhorse. Tony also does a lot of events and stuff like that, just like Jared does, but Jared has a brand that says, I shoot raw. If he says, I shoot JPEG, it wouldn't make much sense, point blank, period, no matter what he says to you. If he says, oh, well, JPEG is good for this. Well, he shoots raw. It says it on his wristbands. It says it on his camera strap. It says it on his shirt. His, I think he said something about it saying on his underwear. <laughs> but the thing about it is, he's not going to dispute that. And shooting raw is awesome. Shooting JPEG could be awesome as well now you have a less likely of a chance to shoot the optimal image with jpeg but there's nothing wrong with shooting jpeg if you get remotely close to the image that you want if you don't have high standards for images then like tony northrop said if you don't need it if it's a less important thing to you you can go ahead and shoot jpeg like it's your camera it's your money do what you want to with it some people remember at the end of the day guys even though Jared Pollan said all these great things about raw photos, some people are still just shooting with their camera phone. <laughs> and sometimes they wish they had a DSLR that, then, and they knew how to use it and they knew how to shoot raw and get the benefits from it, but some people just don't. So with that being said, if we can shoot JPEG and get away with it on a, a, small, a, a small form factor DSLR, then I don't see any problems with it because some people don't even have that luxury. But yes, Jared Pollan is right. If you have the luxury, go ahead and learn it, do it. But if it causes you or risks you to lose shots at the end of the day, it's kind of on the Tony Northrup shot. Understand that at the end of the day, the camera is supposed to capture the event. If you are shooting raw and your buffer fills up, you can't get the image off, don't shoot raw, shoot JPEG. But at the same time, know about both and make the decision that's right for you. My name is Devin from Sister Effects Studios and uh, this is what I think, guys. I don't think they're necessarily wrong. I just think they're coming from their own binoculars, their own lenses, their own experiences. And my thing is, guys, learn what JPEG is, learn what RAW is, learn what your camera is, learn what your camera can do versus what it can't do. Because at the end of the day, the camera is a capturing device. If you limit it from capturing something or you can't get what you're getting out, what you want to get out of that camera, then you should be making some changes.